welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. If you are new to the Career Savage community, Career Savage is all about providing relevant and up-to-date career advice for working professionals and especially college students so that you guys are making well-informed decisions about your career. All right, let's get right into this video. Today, I'm going to be talking about medical writing. On this channel, I've talked a lot about regulatory affairs, clinical affairs, medical affairs. I don't think I've gone too in depth about pharmacovigilance and if you're interested in seeing a video about that go ahead and leave a comment down below but today I wanted to talk about medical writing because that's another integral part of the clinical research space medical writers are responsible for the protocols the clinical research reports that are generated after a study is finished they are responsible for the annual reports the developmental safety update reports which is equivalent to an annual report people normally do a DSUR if they have their application on a global scale because it meets all the different countries requirements but yeah so medical writing is very interesting because you have to have a strong medical terminology especially when you're generating these different type of reports because you are literally formulating the wording for everything that goes into an application for a drug to be approved okay so I'm gonna give a more defined definition of what a medical writer is and it says candy in the computer that a medical writer is a person who applies the principles of clinical research in developing clinical trial documents, ding, 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 that effectively and clearly describe research results, product use, and other medical information. When you think of product use and when we're developing a drug and we say that, okay, you know, Advil, or let me not use specific names, but this drug is indicated to treat X, Y, and Z, or this drug is indicated to treat X, Y, and Z in combination with X, Y, and Z, medical writers are an integral part of coming up the indication because they help you generate or they help pharmaceutical companies generate their labels so on your labels you're gonna see all the information from your clinical research report or from your clinical study generated into that label so you're gonna see common adverse events that you might experience that little pamphlet that you guys get with your medication there's a lot of useful information that goes into that and medical writers are the ones who are likely writing that information of course with clinical affairs medical affairs and regulatory affairs kind of driving it but medical writers are really responsible for the bulk of that content investigative brochures I I could go on and on about what medical writers do, but I really do think it's interesting because they're transcribing a lot of the information that we come up with. So while biostatisticians are helping us write our statistical analysis plan, the results that you get from those studies is at the hands of the medical writer who gets to now translate it into a, into a digestible form. So if you're someone who's really interested in writing and you're also interested in biology, medical, or chemistry, that could be the right job for you. So when we look at the entire ECTD backbone or structure of an IND or an NDA or any application and ECTD just stands for electrical common technical document and that is where you have your module one which is just administrative information module two which is your summaries module three which is your CMC chemistry manufacturing and control section um, module four is non-clinical study reports and module five is clinical study reports so who's writing those clinical study reports who's writing those non-clinical study reports who's writing the different structures that go into CMC which is going to be 32p which is the product section and then 32s which is the substance section so the substances that are the excipients that go into a product to make it the actual drug product who's responsible for those uh, non-clinical overviews or those that clinical overview your summaries who's responsible for the administrative section most of the administrative section is the responsibility of regulatory but when you have something like an investigation of an investigator's brochure guiding an investigator on how to use your product a medical writer is going to help you write that a medical writer honestly is responsible for compiling a lot of the information within application as you have for example let's take non-clinical study reports or summaries you might have a toxicologist or an actual non-clin professional who is responsible for that study taking place be a part of it but you will have a medical writer help you on that it depends again uh, small pharma versus big pharma and big pharma everything's granular so you would have a medical writer working on every single thing and then regulatory and clinical responsible for all these little pieces but in small pharma for example with my current job I do a little bit of medical writing or some medical writing uh, with protocols and study reports and that's not normal in big pharma so depending on which organization you're at there might be more or less medical writing opportunities I think that there's a lot of medical writing opportunities within clinical research organizations CROs because small pharmaceutical companies will contract out what they can't write themselves to a CRO and then big pharma might do the same thing but they likely have a lot of medical writers in-house the next thing I want to talk about is somewhat of qualifications for a medical writing role 
roles. Of course, there are always entry level roles in everything, but I have seen commonly that a lot of people with advanced degrees end up being some of the best medical writers. And I think that just goes to show that the higher the title, the more advanced degrees required. But you can check LinkedIn, Career Builder, all these other job search platforms for medical writing roles. I'm sure that for those of you who are interested in breaking in, you can definitely find some entry level positions. And maybe they start you out just writing annual reports. I kind of feel like the reason they require an advanced degree or someone with some sort of pharmaceutical experience is because you kind of have to know a little bit of regulatory to know what you have to write in the first place. But I'm sure that there's an opportunity out there for anyone who's looking to, to break in. The next thing I wanted to mention is salary. So the national average is about $107,000 a year, depending on the position it might fluctuate or depreciate as well as where you're located. But more importantly, people who freelance medical write, you know, let's say I wanted to become a medical writer, I would just reach out to small pharmaceutical companies and say, I'm a freelance medical writer. If you need me to do one thing, I charge 150 an hour or charge 200 an hour or whatever. Let's agree to this contract. You can make anywhere from $150,000 a year upwards. But given, you know, I don't really love freelance work because obviously you have to do your own taxes, you have to pay for your own health insurance. So in the end, you might not be making that 150 a year. You might realistically just make, be making that 107 where you would at a smaller company or a big pharmaceutical company or a CRO with less work of having to literally manage yourself and your whole independent contractor company. That is all I wanted to say in regards to medical writing. I think it's a really great career. I think you learn something new every single day. You learn about different disease states. You learn about different drugs and products. And I think that it is great for people who do love to write as well because it's a different way of writing rather than being an author or a blogger. You're helping the medical field and you're getting to write while you do that. So if you're a PharmD, PhD, Masters in Science, I definitely think that it's something that you should look into. And then if you have your Bachelor's of Science in Pharmacology, also look into it. Or if you have your Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry or Biology, it's also something that you could pursue and, and I'm sure that you could bring something to the table. If you have any questions about how to break into medical affairs, go ahead and schedule a consult with me at CareerSavage.com. The link is in the description box. I'll put as many links in the description box for resources um, so you can learn a little bit more about medical affairs. But if this was the intro video for you to learn about this career path, I think it's a sign that you should pursue it. All right, thanks so much for watching guys. Until next time, bye.